Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. We're on our kitchen remodel today. Today's goal is to get our new partition wall built right here where I'm standing. So the area behind me is gonna be a home office and the area in front of me is gonna be a new dining room that is open to the new kitchen. So we've got this load bearing wall in our way. And we also discovered that this is a load bearing wall. It turns out what they did when they built this house we thought maybe the rafters, all the rafters run this way. These rafters sit on this wall, and we thought that these rafters also would sit on this wall. But what they did, they put a beam here. So we're gonna replace this beam with the one that's longer. It comes all the way back to here, because this goes away. And then we're gonna replace this wall with another beam that sits on top of our new partition wall. So our goal right now is to build this partition wall. First thing we're gonna do is remove the drywall from this line over. <clears throat> We've already located our bottom plate. It's gonna go in between these lines. And then this cut line is a quarter inch out. It gives us a little wiggle room in here when we build this wall. So let's cut this line and remove that drywall. Part of the drywall removed so this will be our new corner our new drywall will come right into this sheet right here and we've got our new wall laid out on the ground so I'm going to use my laser and I'm going to project that onto the ceiling we'll project it here here two points on the other end and we'll connect them with a, our chalk line the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna make my slot in the ceiling four inches wide because two by four is three and a half. That gives me a quarter inch of room on each side to put in our two by four. And then when we hang our wall sheets, our drywall on our wall, it'll push up and cover that gap, just like in new construction. So I'm just gonna go a quarter inch off of it. Now, I'm just eyeballing it. Okay. All right, the reason we're removing this drywall is because these beams are structural. They need to sit on this wall and on the post in this wall, it's all structural. If this was a partition wall without any beams, you could put your top plate right on the drywall. We're actually gonna put the top plate or our stud on top on this side because we have a joist right here. We lucked out. See where our magnet is? We showed you that trick. That's a yeah. rare earth magnet and it's stuck to the, the nails. Uh, but then on the floor, I would never put a bottom plate on top of like a wood floor, a carpet. I've seen it done. Tile, always remove that before you put uh, a new wall on top. Sure. The only exception for me would be vinyl. If I had sheet vinyl down and it was gonna get covered by something else, I would just put the wall on top of that. Cool. Um, all right, let's cut that. Hey guys, we're in the attic, obviously. What we wanted to do, we want to remove all this loose fill insulation from the area where we're going to be removing that drywall, where we're going to attach our top plate to the structure. Because we don't want all that stuff falling downstairs. I'm trying to keep a clean, a clean job site. So I can see right here, here's my cut. So in this bay, we're just gonna get all this loose fill. And it'd be different if uh, people weren't living here, but yep. we don't want to get the insulation down inside of the house in the air, because it's nasty stuff. Yeah, this stuff, it absolutely is brutal for me. Yeah. If no one was here, we would just let it fall, clean it up on the ground, yep. which we've done, but not here. 
And then once we get it all built and our blocking put in here, we can just come in and put yes, it sir. back. So uh, that's looking pretty good. I'm just gonna work my way towards the towards the eave. And you see where these braces are, Jordan? Yeah. So that's supporting our roof. This strong back is mid-span of our rafter. And the load is coming down here. So our load bearing wall is right here. Yep. And I can I can see the splice here in the rafters and the joists. We're gonna show you that detail too. I've never seen a, a splice like that before. Hmm. Well, it'll be easier to see when it's all opened up. We'll go into more detail. That's true. Yeah. Behind us instead, right. of, in, instead of in this attic. Yep. All right. I'm trying to get out of here. Let's get out of here. Yeah. And go. Uh, we'll get our slot open. this drywall up. from the ceiling. All right. I'm catching my breath. <laughs> all right. We've got all the insulation removed up in the attic. Now this is. Can you see this other chalk line? That's our other cut line, but we're right on the bottom of a joist. And I don't want to fight the reciprocating saw with the blade jabbing into the bottom of that, that, that joist. So what we're, what we're going to try is to score the drywall on that line and snap it off, just like we would when we're cutting drywall. Maybe. Yeah, you just gotta cut the paper. Nice. There we go. Perfect. Yep. That's what we wanted. All right, let's get that whole slot out. All right, we're all cleaned up from taking all of our sheetrock down. Now this wall is 13 and a half feet long. So let's go outside and find our two straightest 14 footers, two by fours. Here's our pile of lumber we had delivered by the lumber yard. These are our LBLs you're gonna see us put up as part of this project. They are 11 and three quarter wide. So what I did, I laid out a sheet of plastic that's 20 feet wide first. We put all the lumber on top and then we wrapped it so, it's, so it wouldn't get hurt by the rain. Let's take all this off, Jordan. These boards look pretty good off the bat. Yep. This is some nice lumber. I told the driver how, how impressed I was with the quality of their lumber. So we've got six two by fours. I think these are 14s, but they look like they're- They look like 16s. 16s yeah. Yep, 16s. Hmm. All right. So two are gonna be the, we have the bottom plate and the top plate of our new wall. And then the other four are gonna be the bottom and top plates of our two temporary walls that we're gonna build when we remove those beams. Right. So let's pick the two straightest for this, this new wall. Yeah, look at that one. Dang. And you got a little wiggle room so you can always cut off a little bit of a... Yeah, so I like that one. My right hand or left hand? Oh, left hand for sure. Really? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at that one. That one's... <laughs> well, this one's going this way, which yeah. I don't care about. Right, because I it's going flat on the ground. I care about that way. Right. All right, we just laid out our top and our bottom plate, but before we show you that, I want to show you up here. You see this ceiling joist? And then it starts to disappear. And as we go further this way, we're almost flush with it. That's just the old rough framing. We know that our lines are straight because we use the, we pop the chalk line. And that's fine. We're just gonna deal with that. And we're gonna put blocking in here to <coughs> attach our top plate to. But I'm standing on the location of our new wall and it's gonna have an opening in it the same size as the existing on that wall. So we found the center of this opening. It's right there. And we measured from the far wall to that mark. And then we transferred that to here, here's the center of our doorway. And then we laid out all of our stud locations. 16 inches on center. Here's our king and our jack for our doorway. These are our cripples above the doorway. We'll explain all that when we frame this up 
a jack and a king for the other side of the doorway, and then our studs. So we are ready to build our wall, but it's late and we're gonna call it a day. So we'll see you tomorrow. Hey gang, it's the next day. We got our sill plate down, and if you notice, we, we use, this is treated lumber. In the previous segment, I was marking an untreated piece of uh, two by four. On the way home, I realized what I had done. Just a mental lapse, but we got the treated on the floor. We attached it with our favorite split bolt connector. See that? Mm -hmm. Drilled a quarter inch hole. And we found that a heavier sledge works much better. So I've got three here. And three on the other one. And we've got our top plate fastened. What we did, we put blocking this way that is pocket screwed into the rafters. And we'll take you up there and we'll show you that detail next time we're in the attic. But now, uh, let's go outside for a second and I'll show you what happened. So these are all the two by fours we bought. When you go to a lumber yard, you can buy eight footers, which are 96 inches, or you can buy pre-cut two by fours, which are 92 and five eighths. That's the standard, 92 and five eighths is the length of two by four for a standard eight foot wall. There are videos about that. Um, you can search for that if you want. I'm not going to go into much detail about that now. But anyway, I wanted eight footers. I told them eight footers and they sent me the pre-cut ones and these won't work. They're too short. So we're going to go to the lumber yard and exchange these real fast. So we'll see you at the lumber yard. All right. We're at the lumber yard. We got our wrong studs unloaded up in the front. We drove into to the back and now we're going to get 33 of these. Let's get them loaded up. Yep. We're all loaded up. Let's head back to the house and get that wall built. Let's glove up, save our hands from splinters and get this stuff unloaded. Hey, we are ready to start building this wall. We're gonna show you a little trick we use. I think we talked about it in our other beam video, Jordan, but if you're new to the channel, we're just gonna show it to you again. So this two by four is exactly five feet long and I write five feet, five feet and then save on both sides of it. That way we won't use it for blocking or something. And then I just measure from there to the top and I, and I add five foot to the measurement. So we're at two foot 10 and 1 16th. So I'm gonna go seven foot 10 to 116. And I actually have this one, this one, and this one all measured. And I just wrote it on here. So let's go outside and cut them. Hey gang, we got all our wall studs in, except for our rough opening for our doorway. But before we do that, I wanna show you how I got the top plate perfectly centered over the bottom plate. I did it by myself, because Jordan uh, wasn't here yet. So I set my combination square to, to two inches, which is just a random number. And then I locked it, and I made a mark there. And I did the same on the top plate while it was still on the ground. And then I put my laser on the bottom mark. And I had enough wiggle room where we made our cut here in the drywall where I could line up the laser beam right there. And then I drove my screw into the blocks. Good way to do it by yourself. So let's do these jacks now. So a jack stud holds up the header for a door or a window. And the jack is attached to the king. If you have trouble remembering that, everybody knows in a deck of cards that a king is higher than a jack. Well, it's the same way in a wall. The king stud is always higher than the jack. King is all the way up, and then a jack holds up the header, like we said. So, in this case, I got the rough opening from our door company, which is the best way, let them tell you. 
Uh, our rough opening is 62 and a half by 83. 83 is the height. We want to subtract the thickness of our bottom plate. So we want two jacks at 81 and a half. And if we did our math right, there's our header. It should fit right in there. Beautiful. So let's talk about this header. And why am I using just a two by four? So come over here, Jordan. So this is a load bearing wall. And these are load bearing walls. So there are structural headers over them to transfer the load from this little cripple stud here. This is not a load bearing wall. We don't need to go to the extra expense and use a, a four by six there. This is plenty. By the time we put the cripples in there, I'll be able to hang from that and, that is gonna, and that's going to hold up our door. So let's nail that off. And then we're going to measure for all our cripples. The cripples are the little short ones that go right here. So this is real quick. Right in the end. Come over here. This king was a little past our 16 inch layout where I've got my finger is 16. It's, there's no need in, in wasting a, a piece of two by four to go right here to keep your 16 inch layout. If I'm within four inches, I'm gonna call it good. And again, it's a partition wall. All right, let's measure our cripples and we'll cut those. And we'll use our, our scraps for that. That's a perfect thing to use scraps for. Yeah, absolutely. Hey. Beautiful. Thank you. Nice. All right. We're all done. Hey, gang, the next step is to build our temporary walls. We're gonna come a foot off of the existing load bearing wall, put up a new wall just to take the load. We'll have one over here in the new kitchen area and that will allow us to take this down. So I'm gonna come a foot off of this wall with our new one. And we'll screw the temporary top plate to here and then we'll fill it in with our studs. Well, we've got our temporary walls up supporting the rafters on this side of the house and on this side of the house. All we did was two by fours, 24 inches on center. They're only holding up the rafters and the sheetrock, so there was no need to go 16 inches on center. And being a little wider allows us to walk through here a little easier. We're gonna be coming in and out of here with tools and the beams. So this gives us a little more room. Why are you so sweaty? <laughs> I just was in the attic for about 30 minutes, and what I did, I got up there with a rake and I pulled back all the blown in insulation way back to this side and way back over here so that when we take this drywall down, it doesn't rain down on us. I wore dust mask and got most of it out of the way. We had an engineer, like I said, design the beams, but he did not design these. My recommendation is if you're uncomfortable with this, have your engineer design your shoring as well. We are slab on grade here, no basements, no floor above us, just the roof load. So we are very confident here. You can see in a few spots, if you can see that, I got some nail pops. See that? Mm -hmm. And that's fine. That means we're pushing up on the structure, which is what we wanted. We want to get, get the structure up and get the load off of this beam and off of this wall. Uh, so I think we're ready yep. to pull this sheetrock down. Let's do it. Let's do it.
All right, guys, we've got all our drywall down from the ceiling. So now let's dissect for you what's going on up here. If you can get a shot of this right here, Jordan, can you? So there's a, a joint right here. So this rafter is bearing on this wall and this rafter is bearing on this wall. Typically, they'll run rafters by each other like that on top of a wall, but they didn't do that here. They kind of, they made these cool gussets. See these plywood gussets? Oh yeah. And that's what's joining the two rafters. Hmm. You don't really see that a lot these days. Nope. I wonder I've why. I've never seen that. That's what's cool about working on houses. You always see something different how they used to do things. And then on this side, they notch the rafter and it's sitting on this little ledger, this little two by two, Yeah. which is nailed to the beam. So these rafters are only three feet long. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove this wall, the existing load bearing wall, our new temporary wall is supporting the rafters on that side. And this little splice plate will hold this rafter. So we're gonna get this out of our way. We're gonna pull all these splice plates off and then pull these down. Once all these are removed, we can get this big beam out in this direction. And I'm gonna cut through the bottom two nails on this stud and I want you to watch and see what happens. So did you see how the blade passed through? Now I, I hit this other nail, but what I'm getting at is the stud didn't come down and pinch the blade because there's no weight on it because oh. we properly transferred the load to this wall. That is true. If this would have pinched that blade, we would have, we would have stopped and reworked this wall. Just like that. Right through it. Yep. When I was doing one of these, I heard a little creaking, which is fine. And this is not the time where you want to have your earphones in or your, what are they, AirPods? Yeah, yeah. they're called AirPods, Dad. AirPods, okay. Because <laughs> uh, you want to listen to what's going on. So these two, we'll pull right off of those. Now let's get this door frame out of the way. And usually what you can do is you can usually just pull these two, the Jack and the King, off of the header. Nice. Yep. We're gonna get, we're gonna get these bottom plates up so we don't trip on them. Look at that. They put tar paper between the sill plate hmm. or bottom plate, sill plate, same thing, and the concrete. short rafters out of our way but let me show you our next step can you see that brace right here that the light is on this one yep so it's taking the load from the roof here and it's transferring it to our load bearing wall well, this all goes away so we're going to transfer the roof load over here to our temporary wall until we get our beam in then once our beam is in we'll put the load back on the beam so let's go outside and cut a uh, two by four for that right there. Hey, that's pretty nice. Yep. All right, let's go nowhere. Nice. Hey, we've got this brace installed. 
and screwed off on the bottom. So I'm gonna go in the attic now, connect it at the top, and then I'll remove this one. And then while I'm up there, we got another one on this side. We'll just get all those out of our way right now. And then we can get that beam done. All right, guys, and that is gonna be a wrap for today's video. We got most of the wood removed, as you can see above me. The only piece that we have left is gonna be this big beam with the two ledger boards attached on either side. We weren't able to tackle that today because we were busy taking out each individual piece by piece, dissecting every single board, making sure that what we were doing was safe and effective. We have these pieces on the left, these joists, that we're gonna have to trim. We're gonna show you guys how we do that in the next episode when we actually install the beams as well as take down this beam. Behind me, we have our two braces that we're going into our rafters up top. We have the load transferred onto our temporary walls for uh, both of the braces, so we're good to go there. So tomorrow when we come back and install the beams, before we do that, we're just gonna remove the rest of the wood. Should be a fun time, but we're all prepped and ready for that. So we can't wait for tomorrow, and we'll see you guys in the next video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, share it if you learned something, and hit subscribe for us. We're on the road to a 1,000. We would really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one. See you in the next one. Good job.